Donald Trump having raised voters' doubts about Ted Cruz's legal right to run for president is now taking swipes at Marco Rubio's birthright. Retweeting a follower's post over the weekend that read, quote, Mr. Trump, both Cruz and Rubio are ineligible to be POTUS, exclamation point, it's a slam dunk case. That was retweeted by Donald Trump when, when pressed yesterday on ABC. Trump continued to subtly raise doubts about Rubio. You're really not so sure that Marco Rubio is eligible to run for president? You're really not sure? I don't know. I, I really, I've never looked at it, George. Honestly, I've never looked at it. Uh, somebody said he's not, and I retweeted it. I, I have uh, 14 million people between Twitter and Facebook and Instagram, and I retweet things, and we start dialogue, and it's very interesting. And joining me now, Kathleen Parker, Washington Post syndicated columnist, MSNBC political analyst who is also a resident of South Carolina, where Trump scored big on Saturday, and Republican strategist, former congressional aide John Fury. Welcome both. Uh, first, Kathleen, I want to ask you about this Kasich issue, because we raised it, Hallie Jackson raised it earlier, and let's contextualize it a bit. Uh, it seems that John Kasich was talking about when he first ran for office. He first ran for state office in 1978. He first ran for Congress successfully in 1982 during the Reagan uh, first midterms. Let's play that sound now, just now at a uh, Kasich rally. How did I get elected? Nobody was, I didn't have anybody for me. We just got an army of people who, um, and, and many women who left their kitchens to go out and go door to door and to put, put yard signs up for me all the way back when, you know, things were different. First off, I want to say your comment earlier about the women came out of the kitchen to support you. I'll come to support you, but I won't be coming out of the kitchen. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. So, uh, Kathleen, this well. is Fairfax, Virginia. It's Northern Virginia, a more liberal part of a state, which is, uh, you know, a very conservative state overall on the Republican side. Sure. Uh, but that that soundbite already causing waves. Well, I'm sure. I mean, first of all, there are not that many women in kitchens these days, and especially in Northern Virginia. Uh, a lot of those women are commuting to Washington for their day jobs. <laughs> Maybe he was talking about early, early in the morning when they still had on their Uggs and robes and went out with their coffee cup to put a sign out. But, you know, I, I'm sure he'll, he'll get through this, but it does sort of reflect a... Um, you know, a, a slight lapse in, um, in, in time, and it, it sort of represents what many say about the Republican Party, is that they're just not up to speed with, with today's, um, today's voters and today's culture, and, you know, we are a, a, a country of working women, and so, you know, he'll, he'll have a little bump in the road, but I think he'll probably survive it. And there you are in South Carolina, which is your home, as a matter of fact, talking about people who commute back up to, to Washington. But let's yeah. talk about this big <laughs> Trump victory. And now they're in Nevada for tomorrow, and he's got huge polling advantages in Nevada, where he obviously has big business interests as well. Um, is it old thing to even suggest that there is a Republican establishment that can unite behind one or another candidate now against Donald Trump? Kathleen. You know, it, it doesn't seem like he can be, be beaten at this point because he not only has all these poll figures in his favor, but he's got the momentum, and the, and the momentum is moving not only with him but ahead of him because people are still excited to see Donald Trump if, if, if for the show, if nothing else. But I think the only way the Republicans can stop him, and there is a slim chance, but they would have to move very quickly, and I'm not sure the, the parties would, would be willing to, but Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio need to both attack Donald Trump. And the way they do that is not through, you know, you can't keep saying, oh, he's not a conservative, uh, because nobody really cares about that, apparently. They're not driven by ideological arguments. They're driven by their emotional um, feel that, that he's kind of on their team, uh, which is an utter joke because listen to, you know, what they can do is make a very clear case about how Donald Trump has crushed the little man on his way to larger and taller uh, monuments to himself. And that's a case that can be made and should be made in the next, uh, in the next few days. Uh, and certainly, you know, before before Super Tuesday, um, whether that'll happen, I don't know. But they have to move fast, and it is a case they can make. They seem to be going after each other, though. It's a circular firing squad. Well, John Fury, you know, 
Well, Marco I, I think, Rubio well, uh, wants it to. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Let me just. Kathleen, let me just I, I would say I agree, I agree with what Kelly's saying. Yeah. Uh, I would also say that Trump has not gotten past 40%. He's in the 30s. It's kind of the old Pat Buchanan coalition. So is he beatable? Yeah, he's beatable, but we got to kind of get this field together. It's broader than Pat Buchanan's coalition, though. He not, won in just about every. He won among conservatives, he won among evangelicals, but also among more moderate Republicans. I mean, his, his returns Saturday night were pretty strong. Uh, yeah, but he's getting about 30, 35% of the vote. We can. You could beat 35% of the vote. You just have to kind of clear it all out, which is why the rest of the campaigns are going after each other because they want to be the alternative to take on Trump. They don't necessarily want to consolidate first uh, and because they're, they're not sure who should go first. And so we'll see what happens. I don't think that this is over by any means. It's, it's scary, but it's not over yet. And what about the Jeb Bush supporters? You've been tweeting about that. Well, you know, I think that Jeb's supporters are going to go to Rubio. Some will. I think a lot will go to Kasich. None will go to Cruz. Um, so I think that that's. There wasn't that many supporters for Jeb Bush. That's the problem. I mean, he, he pulled so poorly. Well, the, the donors. Rather well, the, the than donors. The I think the donors. I think will go for Rubio um, overwhelmingly. Although I think that there's going to be some that, uh, like Ken Langone, for example, he he threw in for Kasich for a while back. Uh, some of the big big money will go to Kasich. But this is not just about big money. It's also about who can mobilize the voters. I mean, big money didn't work for Bush anywhere. And Kathleen, uh, just your take on what happens if he. You know, wins big in Nevada. They go on to Super Tuesday. What seems to me that what we shouldn't assume is that 30, 35 percent is his ceiling, because he seems to be able to generate a lot of support across across lines within the Republican primary electorate. Right. Well, that that ceiling has has been edging up all along because you know it originally was lower than that and it keeps moving because he keeps surprising everyone. Um, and you know after Nevada, he's got a commanding lead in some states on Super Tuesday. I mean, in Massachusetts, it's like 25 percent more. Um, and then you know he's he's doing well in, in most states. I think he is the lead, still leading in most. You can correct me on that, John or, or Andrea. You both probably have looked more recently at the polls than I have. But in any case, um, it's it's going to be very tough. You know, I think Marco Rubio is not interested in attacking Donald Trump because look what happens to everybody who attacks him. But also, you know, he wants this to be a two-man race. But I'm not sure he can get there. I'm not sure either Cruz or Marco Rubio is strong enough to bring down Trump alone. So somebody's going to, you know, they're going to have to I come back to this sort of concerted, consolidated effort to show people who are taken with his um, emotional appeal to see clearly who he really is. Um, he, he has included, you know, he's done so well with these uh, people with um, high school, you know, who are high school educated, and I don't mean this in a demeaning way at all, but it's just a fact, and people who are, um, you know, the more blue collar workers who are, you know, really the heart of America and who, you know, they think finally somebody is speaking for them, but the truth is he is not for them, not in his real life, and that needs to be um, highlighted. And John Ferry, as a veteran of Capitol Hill, and you know the budget deals and the kinds of hard work, the kind of hard work that people like John Kasich as budget chairman put into things, is well, why aren't any Republicans taking a harder look at his proposals and whether they add up? Because Trump doesn't really have any proposals. I mean, that's the most difficult thing about attacking Trump is he doesn't really he hasn't put anything out he's really strategically vague and that's working in his favor the thing that's most troubling about this campaign and it was certainly troubling for the Bush campaign is no one cares about specifics they care about broad generalities which is not that unusual in campaigns uh, but the, the, and the more vague you are the better off you are it seems and so Republicans are very troubled by Donald Trump they don't know how to go after him and I think Kathleen is exactly right it's about Trump against the little guy he's not your the little guy is not he's not your friend and no one is making that case in a strategic way all those ads that Mike Murphy put together none of them made that case they attacked Marco Rubio for Christ's sake that was so stupid the Jeb Bush super uh, it makes no sense why they didn't take on Trump and they just didn't and that's why he's hey YouTube fans I'm Luke Russert thanks for checking out our MSNBC channel subscribe by clicking right here and click any of the videos over here to watch the latest breaking news, mini documentaries, conversations from Shift, and other digital exclusives. Check it out.